All right, here we go again, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor here in Ottawa. And this show, just to give you the premise, it's all about businesses within the city. We're trying to bring as much light as possible to this amazing city that we live in, Ottawa. And today we are joined by Mr. Daniel Shrum from Underground USC. Yeah, strength and conditioning, underground strength and conditioning, yeah. There we go. <laughs> so Daniel, tell me a little bit more about Underground Strength and conditioning. So we are a, we're a, basically a functional fitness gym, box gym. You know, we run group classes from 7 a.m. till about 6.30 at night. We have about five, six classes a day. Classes are about up to about 14, 15 people. It's basically just group personal training. We kind of borrow from very, uh, all different types of modalities of fitness. You know, the functional fitness world, some bodybuilding, just little bits of kind of everything. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of build, I try to say like a very minimalistic approach to fitness. You come in, you do an hour, like that's, you have your base, your ground like zero when it comes to fitness. Then whatever you want to sort of do from there, you have enough energy to able to do that. That's kind of, that's kind of the whole idea. Yeah. So if you want to like train in running, you want to train in this, like you still have more energy or if you want to just go home and be normal, you're still good. Yeah. So it's really more about the, um, just being able to kind of just get your basic functioning. Exactly. Gym sort of body yeah. up and running. And then once that gets started, then you can just work on more if you skills. want to but even then like there's still enough like i just do the classes and i used to like compete in crossfit and i used to do like crossfit per mm -hmm. se like you know two hours a day and i still i'm i'd say about i was 90 percent just as fit as i was before doing about four hours of just class and i used to do like that stuff for about 15 hours a week so that like i've like you know i test drive everything and you know we, i make sure or we make sure sorry that like everybody's always constantly improving like we just did a bunch of testing last month and honestly, I'd say 80% of the gym PR'd, and it, which was wild. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was and then for folks that are listening, PR is basically uh, personal, personal records. Record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and it was, it was awesome because like the training age of everybody was like, like everybody's been trained for five, six, seven, eight years, still did like, you know, a 10% increase. 15% increase based uh, from before we even, before, like from the last time we tested, which was like, I was super duper happy. And it's just, again, like the, just the right amount of everything to make sure that you're progressing, not doing mm -hmm. too much, not doing too little, like, you know. And that's the thing too, like it's uh, one one thing that I like about just being able to kind of test the PRs is that yeah. the ability to to see if you're progressing in the right direction. Right, yeah. And, and without necessarily exerting or pushing yourself to the brink. Mm -hmm. because that's, that's the last thing you want to do is get yourself to that breaking point. Yeah, yeah, because it's almost, it's funny. It's like, and I talk about this all the time, or we do too. Like, it's like people, in certain spaces, people almost try too hard too often, mm -hmm. right? And they're always like testing and testing. And this is something like I learned years ago to like just chill out and like, you know, you want to get at it once in a while, but a lot of times you want to really train and just like that 70, 80% zone, like most of the time is really where you're going to make the growth. The, oh, yeah. Like, like the in growth exponentially. happens in the... Being uncomfortable, but not completely. Exactly. Breaking. Where you're just like yeah. a ma mashed potatoes. Like. So how long have you guys been in business as underground? Three years. Fantastic. So yeah. Did you kind of opened up like right in the brink of. Right. Like we pandemic. went. Yeah. We went through two lockdowns. Mm. We had, there was four technically Jeez. for gyms. We went through two. How did that go for you guys? Okay. Cause we had like a decent, we knew a, a few people and like our community was very supportive. We tried to do the best we could when it came to like the online workouts, trying to give people like renting out the equipment, all that stuff throughout everything. Like we, we followed all the rules, like right to a T. We, even when we opened our space, we kind of like, we designed the gym to make sure that like all the spacing was already done to kind of like maximize the space with. Again, it was like eight people at one time and then 10 people. So you could like literally like, I, like I remember when we were sat down together, everything was kind of like designed Standard, to yeah. like maximize what we could do at that time, you know? And the classes were fun. It was, we tried to, again, like the biggest thing, you want to make sure you're doing things that are fun. It was fun. That must have been very uh, challenging for you guys, like starting a business right in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. And it's a business where you really need to show up. You need to be there Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we're faced with lockdowns and separation and yeah. not knowing. Tell me a little bit more about that time. I mean, it was more like things in terms of lifetimes just sort of lined up that it was just time for us to open a facility. So it was like, there's four owners, right? There's Mira, Mel, my sister, Corinne, and myself. So it kind of, we kind of just all got together. Life just sort of happened that we just, it was time for us to kind of just 
open things up. Obviously not the most ideal time. Uh, and we weren't sure how long this was going to go on. So mm -hmm. we just kind of said like, the hell with it and let's just do it. Two years kind of happened and then we ended up moving spots and then now we're here at our, like our bigger spot, which is now things are kind of, you know, growing and growing. But I mean, struggle wise, uh, you just, you know, you, you reach an obstacle, you kind of find, you have to kind of just look at it, figure out different strategy plans, you attack it, you deal with it, you move on to the next yeah. thing. And yeah. you're always kind of like, inching forward and, and that's kind of like the mindset of the trainer slash trainee right yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah. look it's life is all obstacles of course i train for every day mm -hmm. and i train for those obstacles and i gotta pass it so whether it's the gym or life yeah i'm training for it anyways yeah so with that being said what's your gym makeup look like what kind of a demographic do you guys adhere to or you know honestly everybody <laughs> and when I, it, it's funny because you know like sometimes you say like you don't want to like it is really everybody because we have Two 16 year olds that train with their moms and they do the weightlifting class. And then our oldest member is 71 years old. And at the same time, we have very new exercisers. And then we have like one of our coaches, Matt, is like training. Like that guy, he trains, he does our classes. Then he, he's going to try to start doing like some crossfit competitions and stuff like that. And he's trying to be as like as fit as he can. So it really is varied. But at the same time, the thing is, the cool thing with our classes is that like there's no screaming or anything like that. Like if you want to go slow and chill out, that's your vibe. But if you want to absolutely just smash yourself in the corner that's also cool mm -hmm. and there's no like judgment anywhere and that's something we've really like tried to harness and like kind of nurture is that like it's like you do you and like everybody's super supportive and like yeah i don't know that's and it's really like i find it very welcoming like i've been to yeah. one of your classes and i did notice the, the sort of like the the difference between levels if you will and yeah. uh, levels of skill levels of, of, of involvement mm -hmm. it's very heartwarming and it's welcoming at the same time where yeah. definitely like there is no sense of like intimidating you know like when you come in and you're not intimidated by right. you know those crazy crossfitters that we see at some of the crossfit gyms and don't get me yeah. wrong I, i'm one of those like yeah. I, I go to a crossfit gym and that's that's what we have but it, it's very very i find it like really kind of calming yeah yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. sense of calm like everybody's welcome everybody yeah. is is allowed to be here yeah. Do your own thing. How do you find that within your members? Like, how do you find how they're taking it? Well, I, they love it. And honestly, it's like, it's a combination of like, our members are like that. And also their coaches are like that too. Like everybody's super duper, like, you know, we, we say hi to everybody when they come in, say bye to everybody when they come out, they like when they're leaving. That's like one big thing I really, I try and really, really like do myself and then like get our coaches to do. And it, and it honestly, it happens so organically anyways mm -hmm. not to like you know use the organic word but it just happens that it's like you know everything's easy or like to how do i word that yeah everything's like you want things to be chill at the gym because life is stressful enough as it is exactly right and even like when people come in like the first thing we do in class we do some type of like just basic stretching or just like we do couch stretch most of the time to be honest because it kind of just set the whole idea is that like it sets you at zero right life can be stressful or you know good or bad like, let's just have a zero point. Let's have everything kind of be, uh, let, let, let's check in on everybody, see everybody's mood, and then kind of like build things from there. Like you probably notice we take quite a bit of time kind of warming up. Yeah. Right. Um, again, that's just kind of like letting everything just sort of ramp up rather than just like get at it right away. Oh, for sure. And it's, it's like, uh, I, I kind of use the analogy of the driving the diesel, right? Like you can't just turn it on and get going. No. You really got to warm it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And your body's like that too. Like you can't just all of yeah. a sudden jump in the deep end and start swimming. Yeah. You do have to kind of get a little bit of a stretch, a little bit, you know, check in with yourself, check in with the mood around the room, check exactly. in the, the vibe and then get the workout. Yeah. One of the things that I really uh, noticed uh, quite often, like when I, when I was there, I, I noticed kind of like that, that sense of belongings with everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to me a little bit more about that. How did you guys implement that and how, you know, how did it come to fruition? Uh, again, I just think that starts with this, you know, like just the coaching staff, like, you know, initially, and then just, you know, we always make sure we pair everybody up. Like, you know, there's somebody new in the class, everybody gets an intro. You know, and it's just like, you know, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? And it's like, okay, now we're all friends. And that's, you know, like just making sure that, you know, everybody kind of just knows each other. Yeah. You know, and like, again, outside of class, everybody kind of chats, which is super neat. You know, pairing people up. It, it's just an overall vibe. And just like, even in the terms of like programming, nothing is made to be overly like stressful. Like it's just like, it's all literally trying to implement as much flow as possible throughout the classes, yeah. right? And I like how you also do the the scaling option yeah. where, you know, like like if I'm not, 
you know, I haven't been working out for two, three years. I'm just brand new at this. I want to get into it, but I don't necessarily want to dive into the deep end. Mm -hmm. There is that option to scale yeah. and kind of, of course. ramp up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Because, yeah. like, you know, whatever's written on the board is just, like, your general template, right? Yeah. And then you have to kind of, like, you know, it's a coach's job. And also, the, it's on the athlete, too. Once they kind of get a little bit more used to the flow of things, is just to kind of, like, figure out what's exactly right for them. Because even you look at the board, one thing in certain gyms, People always kind of aim to be at the top. I act, like, sorry, we uh, want you to be actually aim to be in the middle. Yeah. Okay. And that's a big thing to be in the middle. Cause like you sit there and you're always winning workouts while you're, it's not hard enough for you. Yeah. Right. I actually want you to increase the difficulty to aim to be right in the middle. And that's actually how like the, the programming is kind of like, uh, imagined is for people to aim to be in the middle and be in the median. Sure. You can win workouts once in a while. But at the same time, again, you're going to progress a little faster and you'll progress much faster, actually, if you aim to be in the middle, aim to be in the middle, aim to be in the middle. That makes sense? Yeah. 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 And that's the thing, too, because if you, like you said, if you keep always aiming to the, be at the top, yeah. um, well, there's no level of difficulties. There's no challenges. Yeah. You know, the whole idea of us going to the gym is not just working out our body. It's also working out the mind. Yeah. And if you're not challenged enough, the mind is not really working out. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've been in Ottawa for quite some time. Tell me a little bit more about how you grew up here in Ottawa or? No. So I'm originally from North Bay. Well, I, like I was born in North York. My parents moved to North Bay when I was like three. And then I lived in North Bay, went to school there for a bit until I was like 20. Came down here, visited a friend, met a girl. She was really nice. Moved down here. Okay. 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 <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. You live and learn. Yeah. I live and learn. A couple ladies later, I got married, but that's a whole different story. And then I kind of got stuck here. Uh, not stuck here, but like Ottawa is a good place for me. You know, it's big enough, small enough in terms of like gym lifestyle. You know, I worked at a good life. I worked at two other gyms prior to this, uh, cross it by town and cross it Wolvish, where I learned like every gym taught me so many things, which I'm super duper grateful for. It kind of helped me kind of figure out what, where you want to be, where yeah. I want to be, how kind of vibe, uh, you know, we want to kind of do with this. And then, you know, I've been in the gym business 15 years now. Wow. So yeah. why Ottawa? Why did you stay? Ah, uh, why Ottawa? Again, it's like big enough, small enough. I would not want to go smaller again in terms of cities, but mm -hmm. also like, you know, as my, I like going to Montreal. I like Montreal. Law probably a little too big for me. Toronto way too big for me. Yeah, like it's just the right blend of like, like you know, fitness. The like I don't know. It's just wholesome wholesomeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like it's just. And you recently yeah. had a little boy as well too, about yeah, what, a year, year and a half ago now. Yeah, he's sixteen months. Wow. Now. Yeah, and he's probably the youngest gym goer I've ever seen. Yes. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> he is the youngest member at our gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He and he's always him. there. He was always there. Yeah. yeah. He's just running around doing his own thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he, when my, like, Robin got, my wife got pregnant, we kind of had to figure out, okay, like, you know, how we're going to do this. So she took the first eight months off. And then after that, well, to all their 18 months, daycare, at the time, it's actually getting cheaper now. But, like, at the time, it was, was like, super expensive. Yeah. Right? And I was like, well, I'll just, I'm at the gym with, you know. So it's like, you know, daddy daycare, gym at the same time. But it's also helpful too. I find like w for members, especially moms that have, oh, yeah. you know, they can bring their own kid like that to me. If I was still in that stage, oh, I'm not yeah. in that stage anymore, but let's say I was in that stage, I'd be more inclined to come to your gym yeah. or somebody else's because I know I can bring my son or my daughter yeah. and can play and I can still watch them and work mm -hmm. out. Oh, and honestly, like we want people to like, like you have kids, bring them to the gym. Yeah. And we set it up that it's like safe. Like the, all the kids know and the parents know, like, okay, when there's certain things out, like, you know, they stay on the one side of the gym. Like there's certain, there's definitely like rules implemented for everybody's safety. Yeah. Like the, like the, everybody like exercising and then the kids, of exactly. course. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, but yeah, like there are a bunch of members like the, you know, uh, we have one member, he brings two sons. They're like four and six and they just hang out all back. One hangs out on the iPad. The other one actually jumps into class once in a while, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. And then we have, yeah, a bunch of them. And, like, and, and it's never too early to start them, right? Of course not. Exactly. Want, and it's honestly such a good, like, like they're, they're watching what you do. It's, right? it's setting it up where they're learning by example exactly. now. Yes. So when, when it comes time to it, they're hopefully making the right decision to go, you know what? I got to take care of my body just mm -hmm. like my dad or my mom did. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is fun. It's not, you know, it's not crazy. It, and, and you guys set it up in such a way that it's not intimidating. Yeah. It, it really makes it, like I said, wholesome. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um. I'll, and like, honestly, having like Kate around and co like, he's, he's my, like, you know, he's the, the assistant coach. Yeah. Like he's, you know, he stretches with us. I and love everything. how he just 
high fives everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> and then when he's doing something, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he gets wow, super excited, so super yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah, one thing that I also noticed at the gym as well too, that sense of inclusiveness. Yes. You know, it's very inclusive, very welcoming. Yeah. How did you guys begin to implement that and just kind of put that in place? That just sort of, honestly, that just happened in terms of, again, like it's just who we just, like, again, it started with the coaches, mm -hmm. you know, you know, like Corinne, Matt, uh, now with Nat, you know, Sasha, like everybody just like, we're, you know, we just want to like right out of the gates. Yeah. Everybody tries, like, everybody knows each other. Everybody introduces each other. It just, I don't know. That just sort of happened, to be honest. Yeah. And per, I, like, the right blend of personalities. I 100%. Like and I, I feel like, again, from being at the gym for quite some time, yeah. the coaches make a huge difference. Oh, yeah. They could make it or break it in mm -hmm. some areas, right? Like, for example, if the coach is very welcoming, very, you know, pushing, but in the same token, like, just being sort of a good coach, if you will. Yeah. It's so much difference, and then the, it urges you to keep coming back, mm -hmm. you know, and that's that's the whole idea. Is like you, you want them to come back. You don't want anyone to just come in and sign up for the what is January first, yeah. and then the, they're gone. They're gone mid February because that's it. Like they they capped out. Yeah, and and like we like I want people. We want people to come, come, come. Like you know, like, like literally give out the Wi Fi password. Like you know, you have to like there, it's happened so much where people like sneak into the noon class. And then they have to, you have a 105 meeting, like here, I'll just like go in the office, go, you know, here's a password, like just yeah. do your thing. And then, you know. And that's one of the things that I uh, noticed with like the bigger gyms, they don't do that kind of stuff. There's no that sense of, like that sense of sort of inclusiveness or uh, family, community yeah. kind of thing. It's, it's kind of missing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the reasons why I don't go to those gyms as well too, because for me, it's like, I'm not going to fight over a machine. Or trying no. to, you know, get a workout done and, you know, my workout's supposed to be 40 minutes or 45 minutes. It's gonna, taking me two hours yeah, just so I can find the right machine and like, you know, judgment everywhere and all of that stuff. That's what I like about the small boutique gyms, if you will. That sense of inclusiveness, community, belongings. Everybody knows everybody's name. Yeah. Why did you guys choose that particular area, that particular location? Honestly, I like, I... I know I personally wanted a downtown gym. Mm -hmm. I know at the time everybody sort of agreed with that. It's just, there's, n there, A, there's not that many in the city in terms of like, there are like some. Like Lower Town, yeah. Lower Town, but like, yeah, like, I don't know. I honestly, me personally, and I'm speaking for myself, like I, I'm always going to live downtown. Like I like the vibe of downtown. The As much as people love kind of like the suburbs and stuff like that, not for me. And I like to be close to work. Yeah. You know, I literally live four minutes away. And I know the gym lifestyle, having been done that, like it's a lot of like this. Like I go home once a day just to kind of like come in and out and I'm there like 10 hours a day. Yeah. You know, at least. And it's just like, go there, come back, go there, come back. If I live 25 minutes away, well. It makes whatever. it a little bit it difficult. Makes it, it makes sure, it yeah. way tougher. And I, I, and I know like the other owners too, we all sort of like agreed. Like this is like a good spot. Central. For this. Central. Like central, you know, you just pop right, like where we are now, you just pop right off the highway. And you're there. And we have people coming in from Orleans, Canada, Gatineau. Yeah. If you use places. Like people drive like 20 minutes, just 20, 25 minutes because they can come in Barhaven too. Yeah. Like it's crazy like how much like we have people just zipping in from all over. And one of the things that I've also noticed about the gyms, it's not about the location. I mean, don't get me wrong, the location does make a huge difference. But mm -hmm. a lot of the time it's about how you feel when you're there. Yeah. And that's one thing that I've noticed like right when I walked in. I've only done one workout there, but honestly, I just felt like, I could be there for a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. Come and back. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna kick me out. Nobody's gonna tell me what's going on because yeah. at the end of the day, like it's just it's that sense of family. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah everybody's yeah. happy. Everybody's kind of, you know, we had the donuts at the end, and yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. kind of defeating the purpose. But still, like it's just that sense of belonging. Yeah, that you know, I feel like it doesn't exist at, at bigger gyms. Yeah, I mean that's that's also in their models too. Like I remember when I worked at Good Life, it was crazy. Like they try to get people to come in, but just in their terms, it's just how everything is so spaced out. Outside of like the group classes, like people put in their headphones and go. And like I remember, like it's a Good Life stat. It's like if people, what was it, like eleven or twelve percent of the population use the gym six times or more a month, and that's like good. I was like, nobody uses your space. Yeah, I mean at the same time, a lot of that equipment is very very expensive, and it's just like a weird kind of that's a whole different thing but yeah i don't know it's just model wise it's tricky to get it to be like that yeah. when you have smaller like like i know our classes like we're gonna cat we do 16 it's outside of some of the super classes we call them you know it's 14 to 16 people and that keeps it talking about going back to like how do you keep it like super tight and warm not too big of classes yeah 
right? Like I've coached 30 to 40 people classes. That's insane. Well, it's the same kind of like, um, yeah. same idea as the schooling, school system, yeah, right? Yeah. Like if you're, right? if you go into the public school, some of the public schools, you know, got 25, 30, yeah. 35 kids in the school or in the class, mm -hmm. the teacher's not going to have that same sort of level of uh, attentiveness, if you will, of to the students, Yeah. which then again, the marks are going to start declining. Mm -hmm. The students are going to start feeling like they don't belong. All of those other things, which same exact idea I feel yeah. in this. And this actually is a little bit more hands-on than the school because I get like you really need that coach yeah to help you grow yeah uh, and it's one of the reasons why I find a lot of people that go to the small boutique gyms end up sticking to it a lot more mm -hmm. um, so with that being said what are the plans for you guys from like as far as, far as expansion or anything like that expansion I mean right now we're still growing our space I again I, uh, I like we want to kind of get it to like the, all the classes are full I start expanding a couple more classes, you know, that we're, we're always having like, you know, 14, 15 people per class. And again, like we're going to like outside of like these, we call them like, we just, just started these things called super classes and it's mostly for holidays mm -hmm. where it's just big team workouts. Like the classes will always be like right now they're 14. I may push it or we, we may push it to 16 people. Maybe I'm still kind of test driving that a little bit I, because I'd rather have a really good class of 14 people than have it like a yeah. less good class at 16. So for you, if, if you don't mind me saying yeah. the sense of sort of expanding for you, wouldn't be necessarily the size of the class no, or the size of the facility, but it would be more, There's more, uh, classes. more members and more classes yeah. or more available times, if you will. Yeah. More available times. But even at that sense, like there's a certain point where like, let's say we get to X amount and like, this is what we can run. Well, that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not going to like, we're not going to over push it just to have more mem like just to have more people and like, just make more money. Like it just, you know. Yeah. If you want to get to a, a place where it's sustainable, sustainable, comfortable, everybody's super duper happy. But like, then conscious at the yeah, same time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Cause like you want like, and then if we have like, honestly, I want, I would love to have a waiting list in terms of members coming in. You know what I mean? Like this is like, this is the max cap we can have. Everybody's super happy. Everybody can come to classes. Yeah. And then when somebody leaves, okay, then you can come in. You know what I mean? And then from there, like, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, that's... And I honestly, so like, again, being able to do or have have done both, yeah. you know, that super crazy, massive, big gym yeah. with so many things and I get to go swimming and I get to go sauna, I get to do yeah. all of that. I wouldn't trade it for what you're, yeah. for what I have now. Yeah. Because what I have now, again, that sense of belonging, mm -hmm. that being able to, you know, have that one-on-one -on -one with the coach. Yeah. Uh, if I'm missing something, I'll ask the coach. If I'm if I'm doing something wrong or like I, I feel like I'm doing something wrong, I can say, hey. And that to me is it's huge. A, a true yeah. level of, you know, being able to just kind of grow and succeed mm -hmm. in that area of my life, which is my health. Yeah. Which is the most important. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. It's like being fit makes you better at everything else. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it, it, you know, being fit and sleeping. You are you know, you're missing those two things. Well, guess what? Like you're running at 60%. Like it's wild. And correct me if, if I'm wrong with this one, but I, like I, you've been doing it for 15 years. I've yeah. only been doing it for about maybe four or five being, yeah. you know, super fit or like yeah. working out to be super fit kind of mm -hmm. thing. I feel like my life kind of got together, if yes. you will. You know what yeah. I mean? Like before I felt like I was all over the map. I'm groggy. Yeah. I'm not sleeping that well. Yeah. My goals are not necessarily like I'm achieving, but I'm not really achieving. And I'm, if I'm achieving, it might be in one area of my life, but then mm -hmm. there's other areas that are suffering. How do you feel about that? Yeah. I mean, honestly, like once you, that routine of going to the gym, like hormonally and all that, like other stuff, it's just, even when it comes to goal setting and just, it always just kind of falls over. And there's a thing, look it up, but there's a million studies on this stuff mm -hmm. where it, like, it's like, this is like legitimately a thing. I think it's actually silly when people don't exercise. Yeah. To be completely honest, like I just don't get it because it's just, it enhances everything else. Well, we are as like, as a, as a being, we yeah. are meant to be worked. Yeah. We are meant to yeah. run. Like we're not meant to sit on a couch for hours, hours and hours and hours. And hours. And hours. Uh, we're not meant to be on a desk that mm -hmm. didn't exist. Yeah. We're meant to hunt, farm, do all and, that and stuff. do all of that stuff and be out and about. Yeah. I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong with this one, but I feel now like a lot of people are not getting that, you know, more than five to 10% outside or outdoors sort no, of yeah. exposure. Yeah. And it's a lot worse in the summer, in the winter. Yeah. Which is missing. Like to me, like you have to exercise. You yeah. gotta be doing something active every day. Otherwise you're going to start declining. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And honestly, like once you hit like, 
a certain age you're declining anyways. You want to slow that down yeah. as fast as you can. You want to climb that hill and slow There's that down. There's a few statistics that are, uh, maybe maybe you have some idea on that. Like as far as body weight composition, yeah. uh, once you hit a certain age, I'm not really sure. Like I've read it somewhere, but I can't remember mm -hmm. what it's like. Maybe you'll... Like body weight composition? I mean... Or like uh, muscle composition kind of starts to decline after a certain age. Well, I, you know, some places say 35, some I've read 25 too. Yeah. Uh, I don't see now more so. I look at things like more, you know, grip strength, you know, there's some other things you can kind of like look at that really represent how well or how like really fit you are. Because, you know, like the old BMI scale completely. Inaccurate. It's off. Yeah. Yeah, it's off. I mean, you know, there are like, and again, this, I might be a little off on this too, but I know like a lot of like males after they're like, you know, 240 pounds old, a lot of them need sleep apnea machines. And that's just a fact, <laughs> you know, and you can be in a great body composition, but. You've you got know, a lot of There's a lot going weight, on, yeah. right? So like, I know I try personally to keep myself just under like 210, 205. I just feel better at that. I've yep. been 215. I'm sorry. I've been 220. Like, I'm, you know, big boy. Okay, if it makes you feel better, I've been 272. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now you feel a lot better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm right? two, uh, like about 190 or so. Okay. Yeah. So great. Much great. Yeah. You feel, and you just feel better. You move better mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I mean, don't get me wrong. The demands of certain sports ask for certain things. Yeah. But again, it depends. Like, Everybody's different. I've seen some super duper duper healthy people, 200 pounds, you know, like, like ladies, men, whatever, like you're healthy. You know, you look at certain stats, they wouldn't say so, but they're way healthier than like 140 pound, five foot 10 male yeah. or female, or whatever. Right. Like way, way, way healthier. So like those things, it really just, it always varies by human by human. And it's not about the weight or the no, scale exactly. or all of that, because at yeah. the end of the day, it's like a, to me, it's more of like a report card, right? Like, yes. like for example, a report card is going to tell me what subjects you're good at. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing. Like, look, your running is healthy. Your lung capacity is healthy. Mm -hmm. You're sure you have a little bit of fat, but that's healthy fat. Yeah. You're, you're not way overweight. You're still able to do getting up and then going down and all of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it's not really a true measure like true. the BMI yeah. used to be. Oh yeah. And even honestly, like being too lean is also not the best thing in the world no. either. Yeah, you can be like, yeah, you can you, be you not, can not be have, way too lean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, way too lean, you know? Like again, more like, and, and this is super common all, it's like most bodybuilders that get on stage are super unhealthy at that time. Like it's not a, this is not yeah, a secret. It's not sustainable. Yeah, it's not sustainable and it's, you know, it's not a, not a secret. Like they know that it's like a very temporary thing and then they kind of like go, yeah. hopefully go back to something more. Let's bulk up and let's lean and yeah, yeah. the whole up and down thing, I just don't, I'm, I, I'm, it's I'm a, not a big, big yeah. fan. It's a sport thing. You gotta like yeah. those those humans really work really hard at it. It's for that sport. Every sport kind of has their kind of nicks and knacks when it comes to certain things. Mm -hmm. I mean, CrossFit is one of the, like has its own things. This like everything. Hockey has its own thing where you know yeah, just what it is sometimes. The one thing I like about like the underground and yeah. some of the the other gyms that I've been at, like the the boutique gyms, mm -hmm. is like the, that whole sense of. I'm working to stay healthy. I'm not yeah. working to, you know, just smash records and do all of that stuff. And don't get me wrong. Some people will do it. Yeah. But cool. it's really the most important part is like just being able to functionally do my day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's training that's for really life. Cool. Training for life. That's yeah. sort of the whole point of that stuff. And what are some of the things that you guys put in place to welcome new members, to bring them in? Put, put them, okay. So first off, like you... Right now, you message you like you message the gym. It's either myself or one of the other owners that kind of like you know get gets in touch with you. We ask you, you know, what's your routine, what's your some of your goals, stuff like that. We have a meeting with you right away, or as soon as like I'll, I'll call you if possible. Uh, and this is even before you've even just, uh, signed up, just to kind of get in, you know, get to know you a little yep. bit, get to come in, meet. Then from there, we do have an on-ramp system. So we can do, you know, you do three one-on-ones with one of our coaches. And then for, depending on the human, and then you kind of just sort of flow into classes. There are some people that don't necessarily like need the on-ramp system, but I tend to sort of follow up with everybody. Like I'm always buzzing around. I don't coach as many classes as I used to, but I know I kind of like just, you know, pop in with everybody, make sure as best I can to like, you know, make sure everybody's really comfortable. Just check in with everybody all the yep. time, right? Yeah. Just, I, I mean, every day. Like, if I, like, when you walk into a facility, like, you're already getting kind of like, I know, I put peek over and just, like, see how you're doing. Because you can tell a lot by, like, body language the first three seconds somebody walks through the yeah. door. Yeah. You know, is that person having a good day or a bad day or mm -hmm. whatever, right? You know? And then, well, I know that. Right. When I, when I walk into my gym, the first thing they go, oh, 
going to be a heavy one today. <laughs> yeah. Because they know, like, I'm upset about something. There's okay. something going on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they know that when I'm when I'm in that level, I'm going to take on to the weights. I'm mm-hmm. going to take it on to the weights because I know that I can just leave it there. You just leave it there. That's a great way. Great, like, great way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, a couple of classes ago, we are doing deadlifts, and they're like, oh, no, no, just oh, get, get to about 80% or so. And I don't know what was going on. Like, I was, something was going on that day, and I was... Mm-hmm. He's like, no, just leave the weight as it is. And I ended up upping it a couple okay. more times. And he's like, you're working something out. Yeah. And I said, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's yeah. done. It's out. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all good. That's awesome. But that's, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Because that's really like where the huge difference between a boutique gym yeah. and some of the bigger gyms where it's it's really, at the end of the day, you're just a number. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where here, you're you're a human. You matter. Mm-hmm. You, you're coming in your goals and your aspiration to where you want to be from a, training journey from a life journey, if yeah. you will, are going to be respected yeah. and adhered to and encouraged in a way. Yeah. Where there, it's like, you show up, you don't show up, who cares? You're paying the membership, that's all I care about. Yeah. And when you have a question, eh, somebody will help you. Yeah, yeah, you go see the front desk person or whatever. Yeah. And like, kind of the circle back to like, now that we're, you know, talking about it, like, how did we get like such a welcoming space or whatever? Like, honestly, everybody gives a shit. Like the coaches, kind of like I actually care how you feel, and like go from there. Does that make yeah. you know what I mean? You know that's like, and honestly, every coach that we kind of get in, like, care, you know, All, like our owners care. And, like everybody, like like I want you to like improve as much as you want to. Does because again, sense? it it like get, get me wrong here with this one. It does reflect poorly on you if it's not happening. True. And it also reflects really good yeah. on you guys as a gym. If it does. If the person is really kind of getting their, uh, you know, where they're supposed to be in, in their journey and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted, I have a few questions ab- ab- about the city. Mm-hmm. Okay. City of Ottawa. Like, yeah. you know, what would you invite people to do to, to come to the city? Why? Why city of Ottawa? Um, You've been here 15 years. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, see, I don't know. I find it has everything. Like, uh, it get, does get a bad knack for, like, being super boring. I know, like, some people are, like, you know, like, you, you read, like, some articles online, and it's just, no, no, you just got to find everything. Everything is here. You just got to kind of, like, know sort of where to look. Yeah. You know, it has everything you need. And like, I think the biggest issue I find with, with a lot of people that say it's boring is, like, they haven't worked enough or looked yeah. enough to what they want to do. True. There, I haven't yet, like, been into any situation where, like, someone is, like, I'm looking for this. And I wasn't able to tell them it's here or it's there or like, yeah, hey, just yeah, look yeah. up this instead. Everything is around Ottawa is available. Yeah. Everything. You yeah. you want to be into, like you're into sports, there's sports. You're into this, you're, like, you're into hockey, there's ho- there's everything. Mm-hmm. There's everything. So yeah, it does get a bad rep. I'm not really sure why, but like I've, I've been here for 25 years and I love it. Yeah, right? It's a, it's a great spot. It's a cool little city. It's yeah. got everything that we need and it's like the weather is crazy sometimes but it's, it's yeah. you've got your four seasons yeah you can't find that anywhere else and i think it's it's one of the the very few cities in the world that you can get to four seasons four seasons that are actually very well defined and mm-hmm. and like yeah you know I mean, it's winter <laughs> you know it's summer you, exactly <laughs> you know it's fall you know it, it yeah. smells because it's spring yeah like all of that yeah, stuff yeah, is yeah. there but then also you have the ability to chill you have the ability to to mm-hmm. grow a family to you know, live that wholesome life in a way. Yeah. It is a bit conservative compared to some other cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, but then you have the ability, like if, if you don't want to live the conservative life, it's just, yeah. it's maybe not the city for you. Yeah. You know, or if you want to have a little bit of fun, okay, well, Montreal is close by. You go to go that's, Toronto. That's very true. Book a vacation somewhere. Yeah. But it's a great city to grow a family, to, mm-hmm. you know, be able to build a career, do all of that stuff, work out at a, at a fantastic gyms. Mm-hmm. There's so many things here in Ottawa to do and, and to experience. Agreed. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then also the the geography. Like I love having the Gatineau Hills and mm-hmm. being able to, you know, go skiing, do all of that stuff all around. And it's just fantastic. Yeah. Like anything you would want to do is super close anyways. Yeah. Or it's in the city and you just got to like. Well, at least an hour drive max. Oh, max, max, you max, know what max, I mean? max. Like it's, it's got everything. Yeah. What's next for you guys? For you guys. Honestly, continued growth. We want to. Yeah. I don't know. Honestly, just keep going. We've been doing. So. One new thing we've been doing, we've been doing these uh, little challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, we started in November called Rovember, and now we, <laughs> which is a play on words, yeah, for sure. <laughs> play on words, and now, now we're in stepuary. Oh, a lot of steps. <laughs> a lot of steps. So it's like you set up a box, uh, you set up a box 20, 24 inches, you got to do 
3,000 steps, 6,000 steps, 10,000 steps in a month, and then you'll get a little water bottle. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep, like, in terms of that, plan-wise, we're going to keep running little challenges. We have a duathlon, like a little duathlon that we're going to kind of get the gym to train for on the side. That's going to run in, like, May or June. A couple little events. We're going to start running more events. Because, again, like, the first two years, we couldn't do anything, right? Yo, I'd love to be a part of uh, competitions. If you yeah, any, of course. Let me know, hit me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think I already have a partner there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, the duathlon will definitely, definitely be a thing. You know, it'll be a run and a run and bike. You know, and just set everybody up. You know, on a Sunday and go. Other than that, yeah, honestly, continue growth. And like, we just hired uh, a new coach. She's super great. Not you know, just we're always looking at kind of like you know, always kind of expanding all places. Okay, we need to kind of make that better. We need to make that better. Make yeah. that better. Make that better. We just had the Ottawa Rowing Club join us for the next four months. So that's a new thing that we're kind of like. Nice. Yeah, 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 it was just super cool. So that they're in there. We're just kind of, you know, we started actually doing more sports teams. So we have two basketball teams and uh, the Ottawa Rowing Club. So that's one area that we're going to try and expand on. Maybe do some more sports team on some of the, like, the off hours at like 730 at mm -hmm. night and stuff like that. Maybe a kids program in the future. I, You know, my, my little guy's going to get older. You know, it's actually a lot of fun to have a bunch of little guys kind of yeah. get fit. And it's then maybe like you the name too. for you guys, like the strength and conditioning, right? At the end of the yeah. day, like it doesn't matter what sports you're doing, no. what sort of level of uh, athleticism that you want to, you know, bring into your life. You still need that sort of very basic level of strength and conditioning. Yes. To be able to even play in yeah. any of those sports. Yeah. Not, yeah. not just be there, but actually play. play. Yeah. So. With that being said, really appreciate it, Dan. No Thank problem. you so much for being on the show. Yeah. Uh, and I'd invite the, the folks to check out their gym, Underground Strength and Conditioning. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's right in the heart of Little Italy, pretty close to that. You can get to it pretty quick off the highway. Again, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. And if you like what you see, please hit the like button, subscribe for more episodes and uh, to see a lot more of the businesses that we have around the city. Thanks again. Really appreciate it.